Tons of new products at Aldi this fall. Welcome to the Isle of Shame. Hello, food freaks, and welcome to That's Rank. Just recently, you heard me wax poetic over two new hummuses from Aldi, or hum I, if you will. So when I stopped in there over my vacation, I figured I'd be damned if I didn't clear the entire shelves of all their newest snack products. So today, we're gonna be rounding up all the seasonal chips, cookies, and dessert hum I that I was able to smuggle all the way back into Canada. I also got some pumpkin spice popcorn, but I'm saving that for a whole other episode, so make sure you're already subscribed, because that one's gonna be a doozy. But enough about the future. Let's eat. So this seems weird, which is perfect. Now I've only got one fear with these pulled pork chips, and that's this creamy coleslaw right here on the sandwich. And I swear to Christ on a cracker, if there's even a hint of mayo on these chips, I will personally be declaring war on Germany. Because Germany's the headquarters of Aldi. Come on, I didn't pick them arbitrarily. Y'all know me better than that. Now, kind of hilarious to me, there's a picture of a pig here on the package and the word pitmaster. And now you might be asking why it's because it's mandatory in all Southern barbecue restaurants. Every single one of them. They've got a cartoon pig usually chomping on a cigar and they're all called smoking butts or bone in barbecue. It's always double entendre. Barbecue is secretly a slutty business. And those same restaurants always advertise the pitmaster. They'll be like, come see the legendary pitmaster Joe. And then people do and be like, Joe makes the best damn mustard sauce this side of Charleston. But if you say that to a North Carolinian, next thing you know, it's a civil war. Brother against brother, Carolinian against Carolinian, because North Carolina don't do that mustard sauce. They do it chopped and dripping in vinegar. They don't have time for Pitmaster Joe because they got Pitmaster Jimbo. And now you might be thinking that I'm making fun of all this, but I assure you that I'm absolutely not. All of this is actually kind of my dream deep inside. A sign with a cigar chomping pig announcing that you're coming to eat with Pitmaster Chris. And I'm not telling you what sauce that I'm serving because I don't need my comment section being lit up by pitchforks. It's your standard Clancy's limited time fare. It's the thick cut kettle cooked chip. These are pretty close to tasting like pulled pork. Mm. Now, I don't much care for the crunch. The only crunch you should be getting in a pulled pork sandwich are from the pork bark, the pickles, or the vinegar-based slaw. I warned you all about the mayo. You stay away from me with that. A little bit intense with the seasoning. Way too liberal with the chip dust here, guys. Or maybe it's actually fine and they just pump the dust with too much smoke. Something with the balance of these chips is just a little bit off. I really like the pork flavor, but this butt's been lying in the smoke for a few hours too long. Y'all gotta wrap that thing at like the three hour mark. Come on, Aldi, you should know better. You know, I'll go B tier with these because they're very edible and maybe even a little bit better than edible. If they eased up just a little bit on the smoke, I could even see migrating these all the way up into the A tier. But uh, we're not there today and uh, we might not ever be there. This right here is a good news, bad news kind of chip. Now the good news is, is I love a good fried pickle. But the bad news is that it comes with ranch seasoning and that makes me want to run for federal politics in order to have it banned with decades long jail terms attached for selling it. In short, I'm probably gonna hate these, so let's go ahead and get this over with. I do really like the sturdiness of this chip. It looks like it's been made for scooping stuff. And I love a chip that serves a life purpose at the same time. God. They came in so hard with the ranch on these too. Aldi doesn't even have a pickle chip. Just split these up into two different bags. There was no need to combine the ranch and the pickle together. If somebody wants to combine them, let them do the work of buying a bag of pickle and a bag of ranch and then holding a chip orgy. It's not awful. I'd still eat them if these were like in a poker game or something. And these were the only things that the host brought. So I'll put these in the C tier. And if you're a ranch person and a pickle person, these are gonna send you over the moon because damn the flavor on these is really strong. Okay. So legit, who at the Aldi factory was looking at their lineup of chips and was thinking, you know, we've got salt and vinegar, we've got barbecue, we've got sour cream and onion. You know what's missing? Braised beef short ribs. However, I do love that they're sort of leaning into the craziness of this entire flavor. Check this out here. Slow cooked flavor. Slow cooked flavor? These are freaking potato chips. You fry them in volcanic oil temperatures as fast as humanly possible. There is nothing slow cooked on a potato chip. At least I don't think. Can you imagine if I opened this up and it was full of sloppy, dripping, and probably rotting short ribs in here? I'd probably rate it as an S tier chip just simply for the comedy factor. Holy shit. 
these are awesome. There's some meatiness in this chip right here and almost like some meltiness to it. Now, I, I'm not talking about the chips. They're, they're crunchy as f but the flavor it's giving off, like there's this greasiness to it and it's outstanding. I feel like I need to take a shower because I feel so dirty right now. I legitimately can't believe I'm about to say this, but these are straight S tier chips. Like I would rank these chips amongst the very best on the planet. I need these in my life permanently. Aldi, do not rotate them out of the aisle of shame. I'm committed to buying um, at least one more bag before the year is over. I'd commit to more, but y'all are over the border and not easily accessible for me. Now this flavor combination for me is the one that makes the most sense out of any that we've seen today. These right here are flavors that belong on a potato. It's literally in the name of the chip. Well, Sort of. They, they say loaded potato chip, but the baked potato is heavily insinuated here. Oh my God. It's got that fake cheddar funk that's always such a turnoff about cheese flavored chips. I wish they could figure out a way to get the cheese flavor on the chips without smelling like a foot that's got some unfortunate fungal disease and has been untreated for a while. That's not bad actually. I really like the bacon seasoning that they used. It's got a far more bacony baconness to it than the Lay's bacon flavor does. That's a really excellent simulation, Aldi. You've done really well here. Now it's nowhere near as good as the short ribs. Those chips are on a whole nother planet compared to anything else that we've had today so far, but I think it's probably on par with the pulled pork. So I give it a B level rating. It's good. I'd be perfectly content if these were served alongside of a hot dog. And sometimes that's all anybody needs in a potato chip. All right, so that my friends is it for the salty snacks. But before I move ahead to the cookies and the hummus, although not together, that would be kind of weird. If you'd like the new monthly Aldi snacks to become a regular channel feature, comment below. I know that Aldi has a pretty passionate fan following, so hit me up in the comment section and give me a subscription while you're at it, because I'm all about the limited time stuff, the weird stuff that we see on shelves, and Aldi's Isle of Shame sort of fits that bill. So what I like about this packaging on the S'mores cookie is the acknowledgement of the graham cracker right there in the graphic. So many companies forget about the graham cracker aspect when it comes to s'mores and just churn out a marshmallow and chocolate flavored thing and call it s'mores. Well, it ain't. Now, Benton's are Aldi's version of Oreos, AKA not Oreos. They're imposters, they're shams, they're Oreos. That said, I'm open-minded about the entire thing. I just want a good tasting cookie. I legit don't care if the name is Sweaty Bunghole, as long as it tastes like s'mores and not Sweaty Bunghole. You do you, marketing geniuses. Well, on the marketing not geniuses front, they don't seem to have the special pull tab that Oreo packaging does. Uh, they, they need to steal that immediately. Well, they're doing something just a little bit bravely here. You'll see that they're running the graham cracker on top, chocolate on the bottom, and marshmallow cream in the middle. Now, personally, I'd have done a mix of marshmallow cream and chocolate cream in the middle and then just done graham cracker on both sides of it, but I'm nitpicky like that. Well, good morning to you, baby girl. How you doing? First of all, kudos for getting that graham cracker flavor in this cookie. The chocolate cookie's also good. It's very Oreo-like and together, bam, you've hit two of the flavor components right off the bat. Oddly, the biggest miss is actually the marshmallow, which feels like the part that probably should have been the easiest in the creation of these. It's just a vanilla cream. And I realize that marshmallows are vanilla flavored, but there's a certain je ne sais quoi that makes a marshmallow a marshmallow. And this isn't quite there. So it's not a s'mores, but it's still a really damn good cookie. And I like the components working in tandem together here. I'm gonna go A tier on this. And if they were to tweak the cream just a little bit, this would be some S tier stuff. And for those of you in the Ottawa community who are hoping I'm gonna be posting these to give these away, uh, not on your life, these are all mine. Now these are intriguing to me. I love apple cider donuts and I have regrets that I didn't pick one up when I was at the state fair. A little bit shocked that Duncan didn't have any either if I'm being completely honest with you. You know what, Duncan, be better. There's more to fall than pumpkin spice. Now the key to the success of these is gonna be to not fall in the trap of making these too apple -y. Apple cider donuts never are very apple -y. There's just enough of it in there to add a little bit of tartness to an old fashioned donut and then you roll it in copious amounts of sugar to make anybody forget that you're eating a crappy old fashioned donut. It's science, really. Now I'm not one to really 
drink very much, but I did try a hard apple cider donut drink when I was in Syracuse by 1911 established. And it actually suffered from the issue of being a little too apple-y. And I guess that that's a given with a cider. You know, hard cider is probably my go-to the handful of times a year that I have a drink. So I did like it, but I wouldn't have added the word donut to the packaging. Although granted, adding the word donut to the packaging increased their sales with me by an infinite percentage. So I guess it worked. Hot damn, Aldi. You guys are on a roll today. Nearly everything has been really, really good, and this is even better than really good. So Oreo did an apple cider donut cookie a few years back, and it's generally considered amongst their best limited time releases ever. It's astounding they've never run it for a second go around because the fan base is simply mental for it. And while I don't have them here to do a side-by-side, -side, and I'm going off my really, really faulty memory, I dare say that these ones might be better. S tier all the way for this. This is a top tier legendary cookie. It's absolutely fantastic. And I assume that this is gonna be appearing annually on Aldi shelves every single fall. So get you some while they're around. I promised you that I'd be back soon with new dessert hummus, and it's come even faster than you thought. And if you saw my last dessert hummus review, you know that I instantly fell in love with the fruit flavored ones. So my expectations are pretty insanely high right now even if I have absolutely no idea what the hell cookie butter is. Now, in order to solve this mystery, I went directly to the retailer who writes, it's sweetly spiced dessert hummus, reminiscent of classic Speckaloos cookies. And now you might be wondering what a Speckaloos cookie is. I, I have no idea. Now, I saw some people suggest that if you were to mix coconut or chocolate chips into this hummus, it heightens it. But personally, I'm not so sure about mixing a coconut in here. I feel like its furry husk would cling to the hummus and leave unwanted coconut pubes all over the place, and that, that, that's not for me. Uh, fun fact though, unwanted coconut pubes used to be my online dating name. Hmm. You know, I'm not sure that graham crackers are the right vessel for this one. I almost feel like this would probably be even better on apple slices, to be honest with you. But on a more serious note, I can see just eating this by the spoonful. I think I've shared with you guys before that my middle of the night go-to when I need something just before passing out is a spoonful of peanut butter. And this to me seems like an even better alternative. Um, I might start keeping this stuff around specifically for my nighttime snacking. And this one's good, um, not as life-changing as the fruit ones that I had previously, so I'll give this a B-tier rating. It's perfectly good, uh, very cooky, and I'd be happy to see it again in the fridge, and I'd even buy it again if that mixed berry one was nowhere to be seen. I don't know about you, but I find this to be a bit of a weird release in the fall. I liken snickerdoodles to being a Christmas time treat, but here we are, in September. By the way, I'm not ruling out that they meant this for Christmas. Costco's already had their stuff out for like a month already. These retailers have no chill when it comes to Christmas. Now, I feel like this should pair better with the graham crackers than the last one did if they taste anything like a normal snickerdoodle. The warm nutmeg and the cinnamon should work really well with that honey graham flavor. At least, I think. I'm not actually a scientist. I'm just some dude thinking out loud without any basis to come to these kind of conclusions. On the other hand, there's something to be said for trusting your gut instincts. Especially when you put the kind of miles on your gut that I have, you know, all I do is eat food. Maybe you don't eat food, but I do. And my instincts were really right with this one. Very good, lots of cinnamon. It's giving me a very homey Christmas time feel. I could see eating this on the couch while sobbing over a Hallmark movie. That is what people do at the holidays, right? I don't actually know. I'm just trying to connect with you better on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I watch Home Alone on a constant loop. I'm just very one-tracked when it comes to my movie watching traditions. I'll go A tier with this one. It's better than the cookie butter and another line of good new drops from Aldi this month. In fact, uh, I'm back to work after a long layoff and I'm probably gonna be working this tub over while I sit there deleting all the emails that came in during my absence. I, I mean, reading and actioning them and not deleting if my bosses are watching. Guys, that's it. There's literally nothing left to talk about. 
unless there were snacks that I missed. So let me know in the comment section below if there was anything in the Isle of Shame that I overlooked so I could be more on my game the next time out. All right, I'm gonna go digest. Uh, I'll catch you soon. I'm out. <laughs>